fly fishing is really a journey through life. But what you find is that the longer you fly fish, the more your senses become aware of, of what's around you. You start to pay attention to the little details. And then you realize that it's not about getting to be a better fly fisherman. It's about being a better human and a better person. You kind of soak in the beauty of this. If that doesn't impact you, uh, you need to spend more time fishing. What I like about guides in the state of Maine is that it, it doesn't feel like we're all in competition with one another. Uh, we're out here for pretty much the same reason. We love the outdoors. Um, you know, conservation is important. Water quality is important. We're trying to send, send messages um, that this is a great recreation. Families can do it, single people can do it, girlfriends can do it, guy friends can do it, kids can do it, everybody can do this. That's what makes it enjoyable. Yeah, why is that important for families to do together? Well, right, it's, it's, it's time away from a screen. I mean, you're here smelling, talking, interacting. Oh, dad caught a fish, mom caught a bigger fish. It's great, you, you can't beat it. I was raised the majority of my childhood up here at the uh, juncture of the Kennebec and Carabasa River in North Anson. Uh, I enjoyed my childhood there. It was great growing up on the river and uh, I built on that to become a, a main guide. Bucktail Guide Service is a full service guiding company. Uh, we focus on fly fishing in western Maine. You're not ever casting the fly, right? What you're actually doing is casting the heavy float line that this is the float line. That's where the weight is in a fly line. So as you can see, I'm casting the yellow line and not the fly. Bring the rod tip up, let a big D-loop form in it, and then snap it forward. And you're just unrolling it. Try that. And I'm holding this out like this. Yeah, it's good. Feels good to do that. <laughs> just roll it out. Nice cast. Nothing wrong with that cast. Let it go down or There's a fish there. Somewhere, <gasps> there somewhere out there. <laughs> I thought you saw one. <laughs> we have a lot of independent guides. Uh, which started in the late 1800s with the first uh, main guide was a woman, uh, Fly Rod Crosby. That's cool. and that was her it, name, Fly Rod Crosby? Yeah, that was her nickname. And uh, she, uh, you know, there were, that first year, there were 1,700 guides that signed up to be in the program. And so that's when the legacy started. Guys, a lot of time, are um, performance driven, mm -hmm. where they want to catch fish, they want to catch fish. But women guides add a different element to where it's more about the journey. There are some, you know, I've caught some great fish with some women guide, but it's a little different message and I really enjoy that. And I try to mimic that journey approach mm -hmm. in my own guiding because it's really all about this. It's not about catching. That's enjoyable, that's icing on the cake, but it's really about getting out. So fly fishing can happen with a lot of different types of flies. So these are streamer flies and these imitate bait fish. As you can see, they have uh, marabou feathers, fluffy. That's a lot of action in the water. Um, some of them have um, beaded heads that will sink them to the bottom, but they're all uh, made to attract uh, fish when they're searching for um, other species of minnows, um, sculpins, smaller trout, um, you know, bait fish of some sort. The fly fishing community has really adopted the catch and release policy, which um, involves barbless hooks. And the idea is that um, the trout populations, um, you know, have been decimated in the past by um, overfishing, by, um, uh, frankly, the, the wood industry of floating logs in the river, which is a great heritage of Maine, but, uh, you know, it decimated a population. We want the trout population to come back. So by doing that, we're, we're saying catch and release is the way to go. So you take the barbs off your hook. You want to get them in the net as quick as you can. If you have the need to take a picture, everybody loves a good fish picture, no doubt about it. Take it quick, get them back in the water. It's just another um, act of conservation. What are some of the biggest threats to the water quality and things right now? You know, um, frankly, water pollution, that's the obvious answer. 
mills that are located on rivers. People that even own property inside a suburban area that think that um, you know getting rid of their car soap and dumping it into a storm drain, it can wind up in a body of water. We have to be aware that our impact on water quality can be negative. It is getting positive though. The Androscoggin in areas have been much cleaner. The Kennebec is much cleaner. But we have to keep going. You know, frankly, even within the fly fishing community, the monofilament that you have, you might not think dropping that in the water is a big deal, but it is a big deal because microplastics and how much they're polluting. Um, and you know, you can walk along and see gnarly messes of the stuff. So, but they are coming up with really cool gadgets that are trash collectors, mm -hmm. which I love. Okay. Um, and uh, so, there's no reason for a person to snip a piece and forget about it. There are ways to collect that. If you don't have it, stick it in your pocket. So I think that probably feeds back into why it's important to have kids involved in this and because it feeds into how they view nature, care for nature, and understand their impact from a younger age. Right. We have to educate the youth. Without that appreciation, they're going to make the mistakes that we made. Did you find during COVID when people had to naturally be outside more truly, I mean, you're socially distanced fully, Right. Did that bring in new crops of people that... It, it did, and the interface between nature and, and human wasn't ready for that big influx of people. It taxed the environment. It taxed nature. Now it starts to be uh, people that are out there that thought they'd like it have maybe left for whatever reason. There are some people that have stayed, which is really important, right? We have a new crop of campers and hikers and fishermen and you name it. They're all out there. and. You know, that's important, but I, I don't think nature was, was quite ready for the amount of people that came out. But it, it, like nature does, it reacted well to it. Nature finds a way. Nature finds a way. <laughs>